Welcome, Wordlings. I'm here at Nan's Games and Comics in Houston, and I am talking to Solar Flare Games, and they are here to represent all of their awesome games, especially Nightmare Force, which is coming out early 2016, probably around February time. So what inspired both of y'all to start making games? Well, for me, it's always been about you know enjoying and trying to bring people back together for more of a social interaction than a technical interaction because with the advent of you know world of warcraft and all of those multiplayer online gaming systems the only interaction you have with people is over a voice channel or ventrilo or you know whatever they're using today and it was really about you know bringing families and friends back together at a table to interact in an analog manner so you have kickstarted two games and those two games were obviously successful what did you learn from kickstarting those two games? Um, you know, one of the biggest things I learned was you got to build a following and, and, and build an awareness of what you're doing before you get, A lot of people just think you can drop it on Kickstarter and yay, we'll fund. And it's really busy on there and it's really hard to stand out. So, you know, you come do things like this where you show people what you're doing ahead of time, get them to tell other people and you know, build a following. And I think the other thing was really finding a way to fit uh, financially underpine what you're doing in the sense that make sure it's affordable make sure you can hit a price point that on Kickstarter people will feel is is valuable for what you're doing uh, thrash car is very expensive to make um, it was a very large price point to start off with and we've actually been going down <laughs> as we as we nightmare forest will have the lowest uh, price point when we kickstart in February out of all the games we've ever done so along those lines what comes first theme or mechanics for you theme Theme. Always theme. Always it's theme. it's. Uh, it, I learned a lesson a long time ago from a friend of mine who's who's done games for a long time, and the trick is, I'm trying to figure. There's a lot of times that a marginal game that's really attractive will get played a lot, whereas a really ugly game that has an amazing mechanic, people will ignore it. Thrash Car, unfortunately, to a degree, had a looks like a racing game when it's not actually a racing game. It's really Munch, almost like Munchkin and race cars in the sense that you're, it's a mess with your neighbor, screw your neighbor kind of game. We just happened to slap race cars on the front of it, which we learned is, you know, to the general population, oh, uh, yeah, you know, uh, you know, whereas zombies, I, did, I wanted to do zombie game, but I didn't want it to be like every other zombie game. So that's why the humans are not zombies, it's the animals. And so it's family friendly, it doesn't give kids nightmares, and it's still something that's fun for everybody to play and has that genre. Uh, feeding into that genre. I really like what you're doing. I like the fact that you think about the family aspect to gaming. Do you find that the reason mechanics don't come first, not just because theme's super fun to work around, like I love thematic games, but do you find that it's also like something unique to board games over video games? Because video games will grab somebody just because they have a unique mechanic over board games. I mean, the average First person shooter is a first person shooter. You just you oh look it's clowns. Oh look it's aliens. I mean it's it's theme redressing a video game is a lot easier than sometimes redressing a board game or a card game. Um, for me, I know what I want to build mechanics that are interesting without being okay, let's go look at the manual again. Okay, let's go look at the manual again. Um, like like I said, Thrash Car is fairly complicated, but we wanted to do something that was kind of had a deep mechanic you know, because the Screw Your Neighbor game is easy, but we wanted it to be sophisticated. Yeah. So that's what we did with that. Dumpster Brawl is literally combat rummy. Yeah, the idea is, you know, all well, that old card game I used to play with my great grandfather, you know, all oh, this is so much fun. Well, how can we make it interactive so everybody's, you know, at least two people are always actioning and so we made a combat mechanic in it. So Nightmare Forest, that's your third game you're gonna kickstart. Yes. And you said that you were kind of going something different. You're going a little smaller on this game as far as production costs go. But it really looks like a really interesting like game in the fact that it's also got some great art and some interesting mechanics. Can you speak a little bit more to what's going on in that game? So, yeah, Nightmare Forest is the idea of you and your friends are out camping and you're sitting in the campground and all of a sudden the forest comes alive with the sound of the undead. And, and then it goes the furry undead. And so it's this, <laughs> you know, all these forest creatures are coming to, to, to eat you. And so it's kids can identify with it, adults can identify with it without being the shambling walking dead coming to get you, which can give people nightmares. And with Nightmare Forest, the idea is you grab something from the, your campground and you dash into the forest and you're running for the road. And really is first person to make it to the road wins. Sorry, all the rest of your friends get eaten. <laughs> and uh, from that standpoint, the mechanic is really built around a push your luck 
plus a dice pool, mm -hmm. plus a little bit of uh, card hand management because you, you can acquire gear as you play, and the gear has a limited use, and it affects your dice pool and it affects your rolls. So you're, you're really a mishmash of a bunch of little mechanics that are easy to remember, and you don't have to check the rule book. And so the idea is, yeah, I flip the zombie over. I have to choose how many dice to use. The dice are a couple sides are blank. A couple sides have hits. Well, the zombie requires a certain number of hits. If you don't meet the number of hits or higher, you take a wound. If you take five wounds, they eat you. You know, so the idea is the dice have two blank sides. So you can miss. So you have to make a decision. How many dice am I going to use? I know there's a little bit of luck involved. You know, how, how am I going to do it? And you also have the gear. You can kind of enhance what you're doing with your gear, but it also has limited uses. And some of the gear has side effects of generating noise. So then you can actually actually make more of what zombies come while you're trying to kill the ones you're fighting. So it's just lots of little things that, that make logical sense in the theme of the game. I, I don't like mechanics where... Well, that makes no sense to the theme of the game. Why am I doing this? Whereas this, I'm running through the forest and I've got a tent stake in my hand. Stab, 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 stab. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and something's trying to eat you. And then people come people make some jokes because there's, there's actually a zombie snail in there. And, well, why, why wouldn't it just kill it? Well, you, it might sneak up on you or drop out of the tree on you and could hurt you. So we want to make all that make sense. And then we've got some big bosses that are like mythical but real in the sense like Bigfoot and Chupacabra. So yeah. it's, it's really just, it's a, one of my friends described it as a, a, a side scroller like, Pitfall or Rygar or all those old video games, you're literally playing a side-scrolling card game. Oh, that's cool. So it's very straightforward, fun. Everybody can identify it from kids to adults. Hello, weirdlings. I'd like to take a moment to tell you to like, share, and subscribe. I'm bringing you the board gaming content every week, and if you like it, press the like button. Also, don't forget to share it with your friends. And subscribe, because we're doing this every week. I'm bringing you new, fresh, awesome board gaming content. Also, I'd like to take a moment to thank Nans Games and Comics for providing me the opportunity to talk with Solar Flare Games. Nans, you were so freaking cool to let me do this. And Solar Flare, Dave, Angie, you guys were awesome. And I really enjoyed the awesome conversation we had. If you're liking the interview thus far, click over here. Over here, there's going to be more interview where we talk about diversity in board games as well as what it takes to be a brand new board game designer. If you click over there, the interview will drop you right where you're at right now and it'll just continue going and you can watch the rest of it. We'll have so much fun together. So click over there. Click over there. You know you want to click it. You know you want to click it. Click it, click it, click it. Watch the interview. Watch the interview. Watch the interview. Bye, weirdlings.